once the Unreal Engine launcher is open, you can then select games, create a blank project. It can be Blueprint, C++, doesn't matter. But for this one, I'm going to use Blueprint. Select a location and give it a project name. And then create. It's created this new project. So I, I have uh, I have the uh, project folder here on my desktop. So I can just select the My Project 2 folder, which is the contents for that, that entire Unreal project. From here, what I want to do is I want to add the plugin. So I've downloaded the APS Live Link plugin. So basically, all you want to do is copy the plugins folder from the APS Live Link plugin, paste that directly into your Unreal project. So you can see it's not there yet, so you have to restart the project. So once the project's restarted, you can then go to Edit Plugins and search for APS Live, and you should see the plugin there already enabled. Now that you've enabled the APS plugin, you should see this content here that you can now add to your scene. So this is the new default scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an APS core. The APS core is basically just the connection client. Uh, it has some options here. You can leave them default. This is just the loopback address. So if you're running APS on the same machine that you're running Unreal Engine, then you can just keep that IP. So this little tracked object thing, that's actually like a virtual tracker. If you add that to the scene, you'll see here under default, the client. So you're, uh, you're allowed to have up to four clients in the APS Live Link plugin. So you can run on four different machines and connect four players and up to 16 trackers per client. Currently, there are no avatars in this project. I have a folder here that I've already prepared called Avatar Files. And inside of there is the avatar that I'm going to use. This folder contains uh, a, lot of a lot of textures. I don't know what this is. I don't need that. But this folder contains a lot of textures and uh, the FBX. So... I'm just going to copy this, this entire avatar folder right into the contents of my project. And by doing so, Unreal Engine should have detected the changes and asks you now to import. So go ahead and say yes or import that. Now you're presented with some import options for the FBX itself. Two important options on here that you should consider. First is under the mesh. Here there's a submenu where you can import the morph targets. These are the, all the blend shapes. If, you, if this is not enabled, then none of the face cap or lip sync or blinking or anything like that will work. So you have to make sure that that's enabled if you want to use um, blend shapes. So this avatar actually has face cap stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that without going into too much detail. Basically, if after importing your avatar, it's like really small or really large, then it may mean that this is off by a factor of 10 or a factor of 100. So I'll leave this as one and I'll import it just to show you what happens and how to recover from it. Okay, so it just finished importing the uh, skeletal mesh. So here under the new folder that I just added, you'll see the skeletal mesh. So actually you can tell already that the avatar is like not visible really. It's, it's very small. The only way that I know how to fix it is you have to delete the skeletal mesh and just delete that. Now you'll notice uh, the FBX isn't there. It's still here, but um, Unreal hasn't detected it. So all you got to do is go to Add, Import, and then just select the FBX. All right, so once again, you see the Import Options dialog. So to correct the scale issue, I know that the avatar is off by 
a hundred. So I'm going to correct the scale by scaling it up by a hundred and then import. All right. So now you can see the skeletal mesh looks a little bit more properly scaled. Now that you have a skeletal mesh, go ahead and open that up. You can take a look. Um, it looks okay. Uh, I'm going to fix up the materials real quick. Okay. So let me go over what I've just set up. So this is a blank scene that I just created in Unreal. It has uh, just the avatar that I imported and some post-processing. Um, I also set up the materials on the avatar. So uh, what's next? Uh, first thing you want to do to um, set up the live link is in any scene that you've just created, you have to add this APS core. This is the object here in the APS Live Link content folder. And once that's added to the scene, uh, basically that's the client that connects these two avatars. So if you are using um, APS or APS Luxor on the same machine that you have Unreal running on, then you don't have to change any of the settings. However, if you are uh, like remote connecting to another VR PC somewhere, then just know that here in the APS core, you can set the client IP address for up to four machines. So you can have four uh, simultaneous Live Link avatars running in the same scene. So let me, um, let me now go over how to set up the animation blueprint for this avatar. And uh, that way it connects the, the, the pose. So what, what I'm going to do is um, go back to the, the avatar folder. And here uh, you'll see this um, skeletal mesh. And just uh, right click on that. That's basically this. So let me delete this from the scene because this is a skeletal mesh. So now I just have a blank scene. And here under the avatar folder, uh, just right click on the skeletal mesh and hit create animation blueprint. Then down here, uh, you'll see, um, just give it a name. And then you can double click. This will open up the uh, Blueprint Editor, and you can right-click here. Uh, just make sure that you're in the Anim Graph, um, and then type in uh, av Avatar Pose Receiver. It's this one. So Avatar Pose Receiver. Connect that to the Output Pose and Compile. Uh, you can then minimize that. Add this Animation Blueprint to the scene and then just zero everything to the origin. Okay, that's it. Basically, uh, at this point, all you have to do is hit play. I, I'm going to save the scene real quick, though. And when you hit play, just be sure that you select Simulate. And now you can um, check it out. So one thing you notice right away is the blend shapes aren't working. So there's no face cap or lip sync or anything. This node has some settings so you can actually enable the use blend shapes feature uh, or this uh, toggle for can update blend shapes. And now when you hit play, uh, the blend shapes should sync. If you now select new editor window, uh, when you hit play, it should run a little bit smoother. That's it. So we've just set up the whole live link and um, got it working in Unreal with the blend shapes. And uh, I have my iPhone like literally sitting on my desk. So it only works when I'm looking right at my desk. Uh, but yeah, so basically that's working now. Um, one thing though is I don't have the fastest GPU in the world, so it's still kind of like slow when it's full screen. Making this window um, a slightly reduced resolution 
actually helps the frame rates quite significantly. Now, I guess what I'll do is one other tutorial, uh, and that is on this other object here in the content folder for the APS plugin. It's the uh, tracker object. And if you add that to the scene, you'll see this, um, this new tracker object. So here under the tracker object, the tracker number can actually be found by looking in the uh, tracker setup panel here. So I have this, this tracker here. It's this one. So this is tracker number nine. All right, so that's the tracker number. Set that number for this tracker, All right? So nine. Now when I hit play, you see I have this tracker And um, what I can do is connect a camera to it, grab a camera, add it to the scene, and then link the camera to the tracker. Um, under the camera, just be sure to set this activate for player zero. And then that's it. So now you have this tracker camera, uh, selfie cam kind of thing. All right. Well, great. I, I hope everybody likes this tutorial. I hope it's helpful and um, whatever.